Today we're here to talk about everybody's favorite manufacturer they love to simp over. HK. Welcome back everybody, Clint here with Classic Farms and like I said in the intro, we're here today to talk about H&K or Heckler & Koch and of course what you see here in front of me is not an HK G3 but a PTR 91. It's as close as I could get, maybe one day, alright? So give me some credit, okay? Anyway, HK has been around since the late 40s. Now after the fall of, War of Germany and World War II, the French occupying forces pretty much dismantled Waffenfabrik Mauser in Oberndorf and well there wasn't much left. However, three engineers, uh, we had Koch, we had Heckler, and we had Seidel, pretty much took everything they could to try and recreate what was Mauser or Waffenfabrik. Well, they started off kind of small. They started off doing like bicycle parts, sewing machine parts, and other precision type tools. And eventually, in the mid-50s, 1956, they were awarded a contract to build the new standard firearm for the Bundeswehr, or pretty much the German Defense Forces. And that's when Germany's pretty much their first gun got introduced, and it is one that has been very famous, very popular, the HKG-3. Talking about a phenomenal gun, and that's kind of <laughs> what I have here in front of me. Of course, this is a PTR-91, which is closer to the updated model of the G3, the HK-91, things along those lines. But the G3 ultimately has a very similar operation system, roller delayed, all that type of fun stuff. And like I said, won the contract to be the, the, the standard service rifle for the Bundeswehr. And that pretty much paved the way for a lot of cool guns in the future for them eventually bringing pretty much this guy, but super small, the MP5. Ah uh, yes, everybody's favorite little sub gun, the MP5, or what we have here in America because, because <sighs> gun laws exist. The SP5, the semi-auto version of the MP5, the real deal, made by HK on the same assembly line as the MP5, just, you know, in semi-auto. So the original MP5, the HK54, was developed in the mid-60s, and it wasn't until the late 60s, 1969-ish, that, uh, well, these guys are contracted and started to be produced and widely produced and widely served throughout the world. 40 nations, I think, over 40 nations, uh, had had contracts for the HK MP5, which I think is pretty cool. Now, it is based off of the G3 platform with the wide success of the G3, like you saw in my PTR-91, which was based off of the Spanish Set Me rifle. Well, HK decided to make pretty much four different groups. They decided to make one chambered in 762 by 51 G3. 762 by 39 that's pretty cool one in 556 five, and also one in nine millimeter this little guy right here so how cool is that and actually I shouldn't have looked down like that because the G36 and the G3 don't have a whole lot in common but that's okay I have one in 556 five, over here we'll talk about in just in a moment thank you Tommy built but anyway the HK MP5 is a phenomenal pistol and well rifle sub gun whatever you want to call it however you have your setup there's pretty much over uh, over 100 over 100 different variants and clones of the mp5 ptr for a while zenith for a while mke century all of these guys making pretty decent builds but of course the og hk is now in the market with the sp5 which has only been around now for a couple of years we saw it in uh, at shot show not too long ago Maybe we'll have it in 2022, we'll see. But uh, yeah, this guy is just awesome. From its simplicity, its ease of use, and also its reliability is just awesome. You have the tri-lug mount up here for, again, easy to mount muzzle devices, suppressors, whatever you need. Uh, you have accessories beyond belief as far as rail systems, stock or brace adapters, even different lower receivers. You can do different barrel lengths. You can do all sorts of neat things with this guy. Speaking of different barrel lengths, we've got the SP5K compact little guy right here. You get yourself a nice little bungee single point sling here and you've got yourself one heck of an awesome retention happening to get some accurate shots off with this guy. And again, pretty much everything you love about the MP5, just a little bit shorter, including the actual receiver itself. And you'll notice the whole operating system up here is all shortened. It's not just the barrel. So, I mean, obviously because 
look at how much shorter the whole gun is overall. So pretty cool. The original HK-54 had those funky looking but cool looking stick mags. Of course, they went with the curved mags later for feeding reliability and things along those lines. You've got your paddle mag release right back here, but you've also got this mag release that nobody uses or probably knows about right here. Nowhere near as comfortable. You have to have fingers like Andre the Giant to be able to reach the dang thing anyway. So, I mean, it is what it is, right? And of course, HK loves it when you slap the crap out of their MP5s. You got the HK slap. Biggest thing I want to be known right now, because I, I can hear you guys typing away in the comments, you're going to hurt your gun if you keep slapping it like that. No, you won't. I almost said a bad word. No, you won't. Slap away like it made fun of your mom's potato salad or something like that. Maybe that's a southern thing. I don't know. But you're not going to hurt it. If by doing this you're going to hurt it, then HK obviously doesn't spend enough money in, product, in their products. And we all know they spend a lot of money in their products because it comes right down to us. So <clears throat> anyway, with talking to HK at SHOT Show, they pretty much told you in their classes, if you don't slap the charging handle, they will call you an expletive like I was referring to earlier. So slap away, boys and girls, you're not gonna hurt it, all right? Anyway, you got an ambi safety on this guy. Franklin Armory makes a binary trigger from it, which I can speak from personal experience is awesome. And I hope Franklin Armory is watching. I love you guys and I love shooting this guy where you go bang, bang, and it just runs so well. They do a great job with it, all right? Now, with this too, there's all sorts of different uh, sight mounting options out there. You got the claw mount, you got other different things that you can use, which is great. All sorts of different accessories. And the MP5 is still today widely used. Alec has mentioned in a previous video, they're timeless. Doesn't matter how old these guys get. When you think about it, they were produced in 1969 and still being made today because they just work. A lot of you people might be thinking, oh, it's getting outdated, you know? It's like, well, 1911 has entered the chat. I don't know what to tell you, but did I just compare an MP5 to a 1911? Yes, I did. But anyway, that's that. And now let's talk about something that was pretty cool that came in the mid 90s, looking for another contract to change out what the, what the standard issue rifle was going to be for the German army. Let's talk about the G36. In the mid 1990s, HK introduced two more sets of firearms that were requested to be built by them, and that is the USP line of pistols and the G36. Now what we have sitting right here is the new Tommy built TG36. If you guys don't know what happened there, the T36 that Tommy built was originally building, which was completely fine for a long time, the ATF came out and said, hey, you're building machine guns and you need to like not do that. So it was legal for everybody that possessed a Tommy built T36 to have one, kind of, as long as you actually sent it back to Tommy built to have him destroy that original receiver and replace it with a newer receiver that has these built in blocks to prevent you from dropping in full auto trigger groups and everything that I wish I could have. So. Whatever, dude. But anyway, so Tommy Bilt was cool enough, though, to actually offer this to all of his previous customers. Yes, it did come with a price tag, and it wasn't that bad, except for, I mean, think about it this way. Small business, now, after so many years, being told by the ATF, hey, you can't do this. And everybody that you sold these to are now pretty much felons unless they comply. It sucks. It is what it is. Um, but what we have here is the fruits of that the TG36, the semi-auto G36, which is actually based off of the SL8, which is the civilian variant of the HK G36. Gun laws really complicate things, don't they? Mm. Anyway, what we've got is a lot of fun. The T36 is pretty much through and through what an HK G36 is, except it's semi-auto and now has those little auto sear blocks and things like that built into the lower receiver. We have a whole video coming out on this rifle very soon, probably because we're giving it away or something, I don't know, but we want you guys to learn even more about this, learn more about Tommy Built and all of his awesomeness, so make sure you stay tuned, all right? Now, what we also have here is the USP-45. Now this one here is the California compliant one because that's all I could find, so it only has a 10 round magazine capacity. As far as I know, that's really about the only difference, so well, whatever. But uh, anyway, 45 ACP has HK's proprietary accessory rail down here, and what was really innovative about this firearm when it came out in the mid-90s, 1994, 
four, I want to say it had like this captured recoil spring and guide rod, which really helped mitigate recoil. But of course, that's something that has moved on. And we see quite a bit and all over the place now, but really neat firearm, decent size, good capacity. Again, I think the uh, standard one has like a 15 round capacity, but this one being 10. So yeah, again, is what it is. Magazine release right back here, closer to the grip is where you would see it on a lot of European style firearms. Something to practice with and get used to, but it's ambi either way, so very neat. And just overall, a really cool gun. So yeah, there it is, right? Yeah, these guys offered together as pretty much, you know, when FN was asked to create a PDW and a pistol that were chambered in 5.7, in a sense, kind of that same deal, except not in the same chamberings. They just wanted a new pistol and new rifle for their standard issue, and bam, G36 USP is what we got. Ain't no looking back because we like it and we like it a lot. Now, speaking of all this, all these uh, abbreviations and acronyms and everything, we've got another one we want to talk about and that is the UMP. Okay, so I don't want to get your hopes up because no, unfortunately, I don't have a UMP 45 to show you, but I do have a USC 45, Universal Self-Loading Carbine. And if you're looking at this and wondering what the heck this is, this is what you get when an assault weapons ban is introduced, and that's what happened in 1994. The assault weapons ban was introduced, and in 1999, HK developed the UMP-45, which is a direct blowback magazine-fed uh, sub-gun, submachine gun, chambered in 45 ACP. They also made it in 40 cal and even 9 millimeter, but it was designed for larger calibers like the 45 and 40. However, in 2000, they uh, they thought, well, it would be pretty cool to get these in the civilian market, so they made this and this is well, this is what we got and uh, thumb hole stock 10 round single stack magazine and this long 16 inch barrel that isn't threaded doesn't have a flash hider it's kind of sad but anyway the UMP 45 is actually a pretty cool gun it's everybody's favorite little sub gun uh, that you see you know minus the MP5 so everybody's favorite sub guns are gonna be HK's pretty much unless you know B&T enters the chat or something like that and new modern warfare I don't know but or Chris Vector do we still have, yeah over there but anyway MP5s are awesome because of that radial delayed system that they have a roller delayed system excuse me this guy has a little bit more common operating system, which is that direct blowback, which is found in systems like the Chris Vector, CZ Scorpion, most of your AR9s, things along those lines. It's just a well-functioning system. Now, with larger calibers like what this was designed to shoot, 40 cal, 45, you get a little bit more recoil. However, HK and their infinite wisdom actually were able to use some pretty cool technology to try to mitigate that by pretty much lowering the cyclic rate of the full auto version from, you know, ridiculously fast to like 600 rounds per minute give or take. So pretty slow full auto fire, but again, it's helped to help manage that full auto recoil. So really neat gun. Again, HK has pretty much taken all that carbon fiber and polymer composite and have made lightweight firearms for a very long time. They started it off with the G36 and they've been making all sorts of other guns. And if you also want to see a crazy one, take, check, take a look at like the G11. That's a crazy looking one. Maybe a little photo can pop up over there. Yes, the G11 even came with a bayonet because the 90s were a weird time. I don't know what to tell you, all right? But uh, anyway, HK has been around for a long time making all sorts of cool stuff. And even all the way up to like 2017, they started making the 433, which we all know in the COD world as the Kilo 141. And this thing is cool. It does have a short stroke piston system chambered in 556. Looks beautiful. It's completely cool. And I would love to get my hands on one, but I have yet to see one here in the United States, so maybe one day, much like the MP7, which is also an awesome little sub gun that was developed as a PDW chambered in 4.6, which is pretty cool. So it also designed to penetrate body armor thin body armor, soft body armor of its time. So the MP7 is a phenomenal little sub gun. Uh, Navy SEALs were carrying it for a while. It's still in use all over the world today as well. HK, I think, definitely has a reputation for just developing a firearm and that firearm having longevity, a long longevity uh, throughout its career or throughout a lot of different militaries, which is pretty neat. Even getting into the competitive market, like with the 
HK VP9 that you see right here. Enjoy my sound effect. But uh, the VP9L, they introduced the VP9 to be an affordable option into the HK series, along with like the P30, which is just great guns all in all. But this one here, the VP9L, has that longer slide, ported slide on top of that, great for competitive style shoots. Even have the little optics cut right up here, so if you wanted to throw an RMR or anything on it, you can. You've got all sorts of different magazines on it, things like that. I mean, this guy here has a 20 round capacity. I mean, goodness gracious. And they have an indicator for every single individual round. Typically, they skip a couple at least. They went hard on their magazines, all right? Spicy mag. But anyway, overall, just really neat guns. And HK is still just kicking butt at what they do, which is making great guns. And yeah, they're still in service in the United States military. In fact, and I've mentioned this in a lot of videos recently just because of changing events, current events, and maybe even futuristic events. In the United States military, the United States Marine Corps has pretty much phased out the M249 SAW, which is the belt fed squad automatic weapon, light machine gun, and now we're using the HKM27 infantry automatic rifle. I've talked way too much about this gun, especially when we had the Colt IAR, I, <laughs> IAR uppers here, and it had the entire like heat sump in it, all that type of stuff, but Colt you know, got beat out by HK for this. But anyway, really neat stuff, and again, I really do enjoy HK and all of their products. And HK, if you're watching, bring us an SP7. Just bring us an SP7. If those of you that can't put two and two together just yet, I'm requesting a civilian compliant or variant of the MP7. And also, 2000. And then limited production in 2018 after production halted in 2013 on the USC. It's time for an update on the USC. The assault weapons ban of 1994, sunlit in 2004, and, uh, or sunset, not sunlit. <laughs> It's sunset, so it's time for an updated UMP. I do believe we can have double stack mags now, as of right now. We don't need the thumb hole stock, and it can be made into a pistol with a side folding brace. Oh wait, LWRCI did it with the SMG 45, never mind. Anyway, something else I really wanna talk about, guys, leading up to military contracts and everything else is our current giveaway. We've got the FN SCAR 17 with its 50 shades of FDE, the Trijicon VCOG, the Tango Down Vertical Grip. And if you didn't see our video with Braden Price wearing the Guard Dog body armor and helmet that we're giving away with this too, you might want to go check it out because why? We blew up an ATV with 100 pounds of Tannerite. So sorry, Polaris. I don't know what to tell you. We, we blew up one of your ATVs. So it was, it was a lot of fun, and then we made a Polaris Pinata. So if you guys are curious as to what the heck I'm talking about, make sure you're checking out our video at classicfirearms.com. It's where you can find all your different entry methods, and of course, watching our video and Braden Price's video, he got some pretty good uh, drone footage of the explosion. It was awesome. So go check that out. Many different ways to get your entry methods, one of which is a code word, and this one is pretty blatant. It's Polaris. It's the longest code word we've done yet, so I'm gonna spell it out for you, P-O-L-A-R-I-S. Type those letters in, in that sequence, and you should get like 400 extra entries. I know it's a long code word, so some of y'all might struggle out there. I'm talking to all my other crayon eaters. Good luck, you guys got this. God bless you guys. Let me know down in the comments section all about your favorite HK options. Is there a gun that you maybe wish I talked about that maybe I forgot? Ah, oh, the MR762 what you wish you were. Oh, that thing is solid, the 417. I love that gun. Anyway, here's some footage of it. So we'll leave it off there. The MR762 is king when it comes to 308s. If you disagree with me, you're wrong. Go ahead and hit that like button. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.